Welcome to this sixth screencast on parameterizations. And in this uh, screencast, I'm going to consider polar coordinates. So we haven't spoken much about polar coordinates up till now. So you should be familiar with them generally. In terms of parameterizations, up until this point, we've been considering that our um, vector function has been, and therefore our curve has been given in terms of Cartesian coordinates, x of t, y of t. And uh, let me go ahead and draw a little picture here. We can give a point in terms of its Cartesian coordinates, x, y, but uh, we could equally give the, uh, let me just draw it this way, we could give this, this coordinate, this point, in terms of its r and theta values in polar coordinates. And so that's what I want to now discuss. Suppose, suppose instead of uh, r and, excuse me, x and y, we uh, have r of t and theta of t. In terms of the, the notes and the homework, I've, I've tried to make this very clear that when we're in polar coordinates, I specify that I have r and theta, and then I will give explicitly, but here I'll just simply write f of t. I'll give some function of t for r, and then in principle some other function, some function of t for theta. In practice, uh, because that, in fact that's very often the case in this subject, this uh, function of t is in fact just t itself. That is to say, theta and t are the same, um, the same. So the parameter t is the same as the parameter theta, which is to say that the parameterized curve that we're going to be considering, the parameterized curves are always of the form the radial coordinate is some function of the angular coordinate. And I really I want to illustrate this. And we imagine now that we're going to want to describe some curve. Let's say that some curve like that. That's a, that's what we want to describe using using this form. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to illustrate this dynamically, I hope. So this little line here, as so you see this it forms an angle theta with respect to the x-axis. That's theta, whatever it is, and its length is r. And so this curve now is going to be described as r as a function of theta. So as theta varies, the r will adjust in and out, whatever it has to do, so as to stay on the curve. So that's how I will give parameterization of the curve in polar coordinates. I'll give r as a function of theta. This is a, uh, a very rich uh, subject that we're only going to be uh, just touching upon. I'll give you some homework on it. The, um, there's a lot of uh, beautiful geometry. The, in fact, the, the thing that we are going to mostly need this for in practice is that in later calculations in the module, you're going to need to work in polar coordinates for, for various reasons. Certain kinds of integrals and other things will have to be done in polar coordinates, otherwise it'll just be too complicated. And yet, you're going to have to have some curve that you're going to, that's going to be part of the problem. And that curve, therefore, because you're working in polar coordinates, will have to be specified in polar coordinates. So you need to get used to, learn now, how to specify curves in space or in a plane uh, in terms of polar coordinates. That is to say, specified this way, not just uh, this way. Hopefully that's motivation. All right, so let's see. The, the, the example given in the notes is the following. R theta is 2R sine t t and as I've already said that is to say r will be equal to 2 r sine theta let's just go right for that so that's that's the that's the curve then I want to, to understand and I tell you that theta the t and therefore theta is in naught to pi right and if you read the notes, it'll tell you the answer. The answer is that this is a circle of radius r um, centered upon the point um, x equals 0, y equal r. But how do we understand that? Um, let's give a go. Let's just first see if that uh, intuitively makes any sense. I'm not sure it would be uh, immediately obvious to you from this that that is, in fact, a circle. But let's, uh, let's go and do it. Again, draw yet again our coordinate system. And again, I'm going to play the same game. I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to do it in, in yellow though here and make it bold. So I'm going to start here. So that is my theta and r, and I have to obey this rule. 
So I'm just going to say it and you have to follow along. So theta is going to start at zero. That theta is equal to zero. And when theta is equal to zero, r is zero. So I'm at the origin. Okay. And now theta is going to increase. And as theta increases, r will increase in some way. So theta increases, r increases. And I know that when theta hits uh, pi over two, come on, I'm going to come over here. Like when theta hits pi over two, uh, this is one. So I'm at two r. So I start here at zero and I end up and I'm at 2r, I'll say that that's 2r, and then when theta goes all the way around to pi, r goes back to 0. Okay, so you could believe that maybe that actually does trace out a circle. Let's see, I know what the answer is, so I can make it look that way. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. All right, so that's uh, 2r, and I trace out this circle. All right, try to turn itself into a circle. Uh, not too bad, okay? So how, do you, how would you do this? Well, the, the thing is, um, I, I guess all I can tell you is you have to you have to go through the calculation and I'll just outline it. I think most of you just do it at home. And just remind you that um, uh, let's convert it to Cartesian coordinates. So x is equal to of course r cosine theta and um, y is equal to r sine theta. But I know what r is. It's this. So I have 2 r sine theta cosine theta this is 2r sine theta sine theta. Let me not get too messy here. So now you have to do some algebraic manipulation. And after you do the algebraic manipulation, let's go down here. You'll find that x is equal to r uh, sine of 2 theta and y is equal to r times 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. So uh, this will allow me to, to re-emphasize a point I tried to make earlier, which is that uh, what will be helpful here is, if, in fact, I call this, let's, let's do it this way, let's have a parameterization, let's consider this as, uh, as a parameterization, consider the parameterization r tilde, which is r sine 2 theta, r minus r cosine 2 theta. Now I realize that I now have theta here. What I really want to consider instead is this parameterization where I want to take this out. That is to say I want r sine 2 theta minus r cosine 2 theta. And the reason is is because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. That is to say the magnitude of this is r so this is a parameterization of a circle. I have to verify that it goes all the way around, etc. But it is nevertheless a circle centered on origin. That's important. And of course, what I have is that because of the way I've written it, that r tilde is equal to r plus the vector zero r. So let's just do it. Let's graph it. Again, now I'm working in Cartesian coordinates. I've gone on to Cartesian coordinates. Just remind you here that theta, here it is, theta was between naught and pi, which means that this 2 theta, fortunately, will be go between naught and 2 pi, and so you'll get a full circle out of this. Let's just plot, let's plot this, um, let's plot this curve given by this parameterization. Uh, I'll do it in red, and I'll do this. So it starts when theta is equal to zero. When theta is equal to zero, x is zero and y is minus r. So I'm starting down here. And um, I'll just see as theta increases, I will generate, oh, not very well, but I will generate a circle centered on the origin of radius r. Right, so that is this parameterization. And then the actual parameterization that uh, in question, the one I want is now shifted upwards by an amount r, and I will do that now by grabbing this, I hope. So this is the r, the, parameter, uh, the r parameterization, and now I will paste and put, this is the one that I care about, is the actual parameterization that I want. Um, this is my circle of radius r centered on the point zero comma r. 
hopefully, uh, anyway, you can follow through that algebra and do this. And I believe that's all I have to say, at least for the moment, on polar coordinates.